Seismologists from the Australian National University have developed a way to scan the interior of planets to see if they have a core. The method involves sound waves and could be used to find out why the north and the south of Mars are so different and why that matters. Professor Herdaway Kalchich, Head of Geophysics at ANU, joins us now with more. Professor, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us about this incredible new scanning technology. Uh, sure, thanks for having me. Um, well, uh, in, with this new way of scanning uh, the planetary interiors, I think we made a, a significant step forward um, in a way that we uh, can now use uh, the waveform data that's recorded by InSight uh, many hours after Mars quakes uh, happen. So basically the uh, method that we are using is looking at the late part of the waveforms, uh, the waveforms that reverberate through the Martian interior uh, many hours after the, their origin time. Uh, but instead of looking at the tiny signals that look almost um, unusable uh, when you think about it, uh, we look at their similarity. So we compare the similarity between these signals. And from there, we get a signal that is more significant than these tiny signals themselves. So that's the first step. Um, and uh, we applied this uh, on Earth data to show the feasibility of this new technique. Uh, and it works really well because on Earth, as you know, we have many receivers. We have hundreds and thousands of uh, the receivers that we can use. And we also have large quakes. Uh, on Mars, however, the situation is quite different. Uh, so we do have uh, Mars quakes that are moderate in size. Uh, but we have a single receiver uh, on its surface. So we use a mathematical trickery, so to speak, to replace the locations of our receiver or our receiver with uh, uh, sources or mass quakes. So in a way that a receiver becomes a virtual source and the mass quakes and their locations themselves become virtual receivers. Uh, when you think about it, it really doesn't matter if the waves or seismic waves propagate from point A to point B or from point B to point A. And this is why we are able to do that. Mm. Um, so uh, when we applied our um, new way of looking at the data to Mars, uh, we were able to confirm uh, that it has a quite sizable core um, on the order of uh, 1810 kilometers in radius, mm. uh, which is quite mm. significant in comparison with the Mars size mm. itself, uh, something similar to the Earth's core in comparison with the Earth's size. Why, Professor, is it so important that we know exactly what is at the core of a planet? Uh, well, I like to think about the core um, of Earth and other planets as time capsules that uh, contain some important information about the planetary past, uh, in particular how the planets formed, uh, how they differentiated the material that they consist of, um, and what does the uh, future look um, like for, for the planets. Uh, in particular, here I am um, uh, referring to the magnetic field of uh, the Earth and the Mars, uh, we know uh, on Earth that the magnetic field basically uh, is generated and is maintained within the liquid uh, outer core of the Earth. And the magnetic field, as you know, protects life on the Earth's surface, uh, and it's incredibly important uh, for us. So now we know from studying the magnetization of uh, Martian rocks that Mars used to have a magnetic field in the past, but that magnetic field died. So by studying its core, uh, we try to understand why this happened, um, when it happened exactly, uh, and what might be the reasons behind it. Um, in particular, we think that Mars has a liquid core, uh, but the reasons for why it doesn't produce magnetic field today are not entirely known. 
Um, one of the reasons or one of the leading hypotheses uh, is that because of the unfortunate uh, chemical composition of the Martian core, uh, it doesn't mix really well. So it doesn't actually uh, let the convection to, to happen and generate and maintain the magnetic field that uh, in a similar way it does on Earth. Mm. Mm. So, so how much have you been able to determine using this method about the difference between the north and the south of Mars? Well, uh, using this method, we were, um, this method is not really sensitive to the uh, differences um, or what you are referring to uh, as Martian dichotomy between the north and the south. Uh, but the future work will uh, hopefully address this. Uh, and one way to do it is to study Mars quakes that happened on different locations on Mars. Um, unfortunately, so far, uh, most of the Mars quakes that are documented uh, occurred in um, a, a single uh, spot on Mars um, until these recent impacts, uh, meteorite impacts that hit Mars in the different locations. So you can imagine that if you have a single receiver and if you have uh, locations of Mars quakes and meteorite impacts on different sides of Mar on different sides of Mars, then you have a powerful method to look at the differences in the propagation paths from those locations to to the instrument itself, and this will allow us to look at the uh, underground architecture of Mars, if, if you want, and uh, to, to study what exactly the Mars is made of, uh, mm -hmm. to look at the properties of these waveforms, to, to understand how quickly they attenuate their energy, for example, which is a function of the material the Martian crust and the upper mantle is made of. So, Professor, the Moon, I believe, is next in your sights. Uh, and, and we know that China and the US are both planning to send seismometers in the next decade. What do you expect to find? Uh, well, yes, you're right. So the, the, the new way that we invented, as well as the whole arsenal of the existing techniques that we have to look at in the planetary interiors, um, with the new instruments on Mars uh, and the new measurements, uh, it will allow us to, first of all, confirm the existing knowledge that we built uh, on, Mar on, on the moon uh, from the previous data. As you know, uh, the Apollo mission had several instruments that were recording several years and recorded many moonquakes. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that uh, the moon is next to, uh, to be studied with uh, a new methods Firstly, to confirm these findings, but also to it, we are in the discovery stage when it comes to uh, the deep interior of the Earth, and you can imagine uh, that we are in the discovery stage when it comes to any planet uh, mm. and their interior. So I hope that our method will be used beyond uh, the Moon and not just the terrestrial planets, but also the moons of the um, planets of the outer solar system when the mission when the missions uh, bring uh, new instruments there mm. so using this new scanning method that you've been describing professor what have you learned so far about the earth uh, well on earth i would say uh, that this is still uh, a method that is in in development uh, 10 years ago for instance, we were not able to look at these waveforms because they're so noisy uh, when they propagate and reverberate uh, through the Earth many hours after earthquakes. So now we are making uh, new advances uh, by being able to study these tiny signals. And the reason why this is significant because the coverage, the volumetric coverage that we achieve by using this method of our planet and its interior is incredible. It's much better than uh, what we have just by looking at the direct waves that propagate from earthquakes to the receivers. So you can imagine uh, or you can compare it to, uh, to, the, to the way the medical doctors scan uh, the internal organs of a human body. 
And this new method, which is really um, somewhere on the edge between seismology and interferometry, is basically, uh, I would say, a way forward. Um, and the most significant thing that we learned so far, or one of the significant things, is that we confirmed that the Earth's inner core is in the solid state because we were able to detect uh, shear waves that normally uh, that basically do not propagate through liquids. Uh, so by that detection, we were able to uh, confirm that the inner core is in a solid state, which is, I would say, one of the most uh, significant uh, discoveries mm -hmm. so far made using this technique. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, we really appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me and thank you very much for your interest in this topic. Professor Herdaway Kalchiks from the Australian National University with us there.